This video is going to be looking at the individual features you can add to make your source really rich. And so we're going to be looking at how to add a commentary, how to add external links, how to add a thumbnail for your source, and how to link in related sources from Cabinet. And then after that, we'll look at how all of these different features are displayed on the source page when you're done. So the source created in the previous video, how to make a source, has all of the basic information it needs to exist, being the title, which appears up here, the one source media, in this case a photograph, and the basic metadata, only some of which is um, appears at the bottom of the page here. But what this video is going to be showing you is how you can add to your source to make it more effective and engaging. To build up the source, you go onto the object page and then find edit in the top right corner. We click on it here, which will take us through to the page where we put in the title, um, the source media and the metadata of the object, that the same page we were on before. The first thing we're going to do below the source media is to put in the description, which is the commentary on the object. And you can choose to write your own commentary, which is specifically tailored to how this object fits into the source. Um, or if you want to, you can simply quote a catalog entry. And that's what I'm going to do now uh, by taking a description from a former display label, which is on the Museum of the History of Sciences website. And this is as simple as copying and pasting. So here I'm copying the commentary in, but I'm also crediting it to show people that I have not written this myself. A way of doing this further is to include a link to the page that you're um, quoting, especially if you're quoting a website. And to do this, you can go to external links. Um, what I'm going to do here is put in a title, so to show that it will link to the formal display label at the History of Science Museum, which comes up here. And then into the right part, you paste in the URL. And I've got this saved in my document here, so I can, again, copy and paste. So now we have a title, source media, a commentary, and an external link. And you can continue to add external links by just clicking add another item. And this, you can make a whole long list. Um, the next below the description, we have the thumbnail, um, which you can choose to add if you don't like the default thumbnail that it chooses for you from your first source media. The admin metadata, which we've already uh, put into the source. We have notes, which you can make to yourself, which won't be visible uh, on the cabinet page, just perhaps as a reminder to yourself. Um, so when we go to the top right, this is where you can make your source public. And remember, before you do this, you really need to check things like image rights or be just be aware that this is going to be able to be seen by anyone um, on the internet. This part here, prescribed, basically gives you the choice of creating a prescribed source to indicate to your students that this is an object that they absolutely must look at. Below this we have the external links which we've already looked at and the next thing to look at is the related sources box down here. So related sources gives you a chance to link to other objects that are already in cabinet. For example, if I'm really focusing on the material of this diptych, which is made of ivory, I can search for similar objects and it will give me some other similar objects that exist, um, such as this ivory man. And you can do this with multiple. You can have um, a whole list of objects that are related and that are already in your course. Next, we have the ability to link in video and audio. Um, I want to include a video that is on YouTube. So what I do is I click on Browse. Here, it either allows me to upload something from my desktop or my computer, or I can take something from the web. So I have the YouTube link saved in my prepared Word document here, and I can simply paste that in, click next, and you can see a still of the video comes up here with a title as well, and you can do this as well with any audio file. 
So now that I've added all of this extra information, I can then save. And just as last time, um, it takes me straight to the object page. So now we can look at what has changed. So we already had the title and the source media, but if we scroll down, we now have the commentary on the object that we put into the description field. We have a link to the former display label where the commentary is from. Uh, we have this link to a related object, which is the ivory man here that we could take to in a different tab. And below we have the video that we linked in and this should play fairly readily.